Hello and welcome to Dubai Trains. In this video, we're going to transform these 3D printed parts into this in four easy steps. Prep, prime, paint, and patina. But let's start with intro. I got myself a whole bunch of 3D printed parts from ABR Model Works, and these all need to be painted. There's a lot of different pieces in here. There's everything from small scale palettes, just like that. We have a scale right here, a lot of barrels right here. Well, I guess we all know what those look like. Quite detailed. We got a lot of different sizes of crates and so on and so on. So this all needs to be painted and I don't have an airbrush. So we're going to paint this without an airbrush. And we do this in four basic easy steps. It's all about prep, prime, paint, and patina. Also known as weathering, the patina starts with a P. So let's prep it first. What are we prepping for? We're prepping for a spray can. So what do we need to do? We need to cut off all these different support legs that all these pieces have. And then, especially in like round items like this, we we'll cut this one off here. And you need to smoothen it, or file it, or sandpaper it to get it a bit smooth. Once you've cut this piece off, you can't just hold it and paint it with spray can like this. It's not going to work. So you want to attach it to a handle. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take the bottom of this piece, well, if we cut it off, and just put a bit of glue on the top and just stick it on just like that. So we can hold it up just like that and prime it. So just to give you a sense of the work, let's take a plier just like that and I cut away carefully first one half of the crates, then I cut away the second set of supports and that's number two. So this material, if you see it here, this is just a piece of leftover, it's actually quite brittle. So you do need to watch out when you're, when you're cutting it, they don't break any pieces off that way they maybe take a piece of the crate with it. So now this is the section just like that. And I, what I normally always like to do is I just take a little hobby knife and I just scrape this away. And for some of the pieces like the bottom of the crates, uh, I'm using this file just to file it nice and smooth. So let me just keep doing that for all these pieces and then let's see what we got. And that was one fast second. So here you see all the parts have been cut off of these support bracelets so we can throw these away and I glued them on to a barbecue skewer. I also got a few of these uh, ABR Model Works uh, paint racks and as you see these are really terrific to, to glue stuff onto either uh, laying down in a flat manner or standing up like that. So definitely get a few of these because it will really speed up your work. So we got some pallets here and some extra bobs. We got some crates right here. We got some bigger crates and some more bits and bobs. And I got some more barrels uh, off screen. These steel corner protectors, I just glued them on to this piece of wood. The brace is still on there. We'll cut them off later after priming. So prep, prime, paint, and patina. Normally I would use these primer sodium spray cans, but these are just a bit too rough. It says as well, extra cover, extra thick, extra more. We don't need that because all the details that you have in these 3D printed parts that you see here, that will all get lost. So I went to a local hobby store where they actually do a lot of a Warhammer stuff painting and they have this brand Citadel and I got this uh, well it says bone wrath this is the off-white spray can and this is going to be a bit finer and a bit more delicate so this is what I'm going to use to prime all these guys so let's do that and then we're going to be on to painting so as you see me paint in the background there's basically three rules of thumb when you use a spray can one keep the spray can moving Get the can moving or the object moving, but you never want to hold the spray can still because then the paint's going to build up and you're going to get a massive blob and you can basically start all over again. And then two, just start from a distance. Start far away, especially if it's a new brand or if you haven't used it in a while. Start far away and slowly get closer. And then we're going to number three. As soon as you see a coat of paint or any paint actually hit your target, then just stop and wait a minute. It's better to do two or three uh, lighter coats than one really blobby one where you're going to mess everything up. How much time you have to wait between coats is normally written on the back of the spray can. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, there you are. I already got started without you. So it was prep, prime, and paint patina. So here is the prime. And as you see, it came out very well. This is the box that's transparent. And as you can see, you can still look through it. It's no longer the gray color, but it's the color of the primer. So I'm actually quite pleased with the results. And you can see as well in some other parts like this 
be great. You can just see, you didn't see those details before, like the planks on top, that they're not all even as they would be in real life. They wouldn't be easy even as well. So as far as the prime step goes, do check the link down below where you can get one of these cans yourself. I'll put some different colors there as well. It really works fantastic for 3D printed parts. So after prime, we are going to go to paint and I have a few different colors. And as you see, I already started the painting process and I really like this color. I'm really digging it. You see it's on here as well. So which color did I use for this woodwork? For now, I use this Vallejo 72140 PL Denso. Um, works quite well. I also played around a bit with this color, the PL de Parasito, who doesn't know it. And the difference actually isn't that bad, that big. Now I do have other colors. I also have this Citadel branded uh, green color, Warpstone Glow. Whatever that is, um, some matte metallic for the garbage bin, amongst others, and some grays and whites just to mix it up a bit. So let me get to painting, and then I will show you the results, and then it's on to patina. I promised results, so here we go. Here are the crates and all the woodwork. And these two are gas cylinders, short ones, painted them that nice green. We got a whole load of barrels, and I actually looked up different barrel designs for the 1950s, as that's what I'm modeling. So that's where these colors are coming from. There's an oil tank right there, and on the other side we have a garbage bin, but these actually already have some patina on it. It's not 100% painted. And then here's a whole flock of flying pellets, the rare and not often seen bird in the Middle East, the flying pellet. And here we have some more items to scale, and these little uh, carts right there in yellow. So as you see, they, these are all, they all look pristine and very unused. Now a short note in between, you can get 10% discount on all the products from ABR Model Works by using the discount code DTSAVE10. You'll get 10% discount. So check out the ABR Model Works website and take advantage of that discount. So after Prep Prime Paint, you now have Patina also known as weathering. So what I'm going to do is actually going to dry brush it. As you see right here, I'm just dry brushing some, some metallic color on these black painted steel beams. So just to show that the, the paint has, has come off a bit and then the metal underneath is, is shining through. I also use the metallic paint to give these barrels a little bit more shine, just to make them look a little bit more realistic. Now here for the garbage cans, what I did, I painted it silver before and then I actually did a black wash on the garbage cans and then I rubbed it off after that. So it's just a matter of painting on some black paint that's thinned out and then rubbing most of it off with a, with a cloth. Nothing too special, something everyone should be able to do. And you see as well with the metallic dry brushing that I did, it really gives a bit more character and flair and it looks less like a dried acrylic paint and more like something that's actually, actually made out of metal. So what am I going to do now? I'm actually going to continue the dry brushing. So for these barrels, some of them need to be a little bit lighter. So I'm going to use some whites and some of them need to be a little bit darker. So I'm going to use some, some darker grays and some, some black on that. The bins are done as far as I'm concerned. I'm going to do this oil tank, do a little bit of extra uh, dry brushing with some rust color. And then for the crates, I'm going to do a lot of dry brushing on those guys. So as you remember, I used let me get it out. I use uh, this color to paint them, so that's all done. And I'm gonna dry brush it with these two shades of wood and wood grain and what wood could be, especially fresh wood. Um, so I'm gonna do that just to get a little bit more variety. So let me get this done, and here we are. And there's the finished product. So let's just start off with these barrels. I'm not gonna go through them one by one, but some of them are quite obvious what I did, like this one. I did a quick dry brushing of red or burnt umber. So it looks like an old faded rust barrel. Here a bit of the same, but this one is a bit more grimy, a bit more dirty. And just go through one more. This one uh, I like as well. It's a very faded light blue color barrel. So the crates as you see are not weathered too much. A few of them I did. This one did a little bit of black. I actually tried a little wash on that just to see what would happen. Here you see there's a the little bit of different coloration. So actually it goes from light to medium to a bit darker. And that one's a bit more yellow. So crates are not reused, so they don't need to be super grimy. Or reused in real life, or pellets. So you see the pellets, I went a bit more 
Well, let's call it all out. So let's have a look at a few of them because I really like how they turned out. So here you see one of them. In case you're wondering what it looks like when the handle comes off, here the handle came off. And it basically, there is a spot without paint. Now I can totally live with that. Unless you go through uh, time travel, you can only see one side of the pellet at a time anyway. So this means that this pellet is going to be facing up on my layout. And because I want to have a few pellets that are facing down, I made a few where the handle is actually glued to the top of the pallet. So if you see, I didn't even do anything on the top of the pallet. I only weathered the bottom because it's going to be facing up just like that in size a little bit. So that looks amazing, doesn't that? So these little cards, the first thing I did is I painted them yellow and then I tri brushed a bit of uh, gray on them that faded a bit. And then I went back with this rust to give it this rusty look and characteristic. I really like how those came out. And then we have the scale, just like that. As you saw, what I did here is first I painted the bottom black. As you saw in the previous uh, section, it was really black. It was totally not nice. So then I actually put a lot of rust on the bottom with the, the dry brushing technique. And then on the top, I dry brushed, you can see, um, gray, just to give the impression that that's worn out. And a scale will be used that much, actually, that it doesn't have time to rust. So the top plate is rusty except where it's used the most, which is here in the front slash in the middle. And that is the story of our little scale. Yeah, sitting out there in the weather. See the rust is creeping in on the bottom of it. And that's it. Now if you're really handy and I'm not, you can attempt to maybe stick a scale or write something on there. I'm not gonna do that, I'm just gonna leave it like this. Then last but not least we have an oil drum. Try to get some good pictures of this because it, it does look quite nice. It's a bit shiny on the top and the, and the red is a bit faded. Then as you go down, you'll see it gets a bit more grimy and there's a bit more rusty uh, color on it right there. So let me give you some nice shots right here. And if you want to know how I weather my locomotives, check the video on the left. And on the right will be something else interesting for you to watch. Thank you very much. Bye bye.